everything you've noted, if you have a, on, on the harmonium, you have a flathead screwdriver, uh, you should be able to make all the adjustments that are necessary. Um, the best way for, you know, service needs or, or any questions to communicate with us is just use your cell phone and just make a quick video and say, uh, I got this thing that I'm curious about and this and this. Uh, can you give me some suggestions? And when we can see that video and see exactly what you're working with, we can give you very specific instructions. And sometimes that's just going to be uh, like for that key that's sticky, you know, we'll have a video on YouTube that I can just send you a link to um, that'll right. show you what to do with the sticky key. Um, you know, any of the issues that you might have, a, a, a note that's continually ringing or any of these kind of things, they come up, you know, because you get a little piece of dust in there or something like that. And it's it's the most simple adjustment ever. Um, but for anyone like you or anyone else who's not familiar with this thing, I, I understand it can be really intimidating. So, um, you know, just you know, send us an email, uh, olddelimusic at gmail.com with that video link. We'll watch that and we can, we can tell you exactly what you, what to do. Um, and then if it's really, if you're super nervous or whatever, we can also jump on zoom with you, um, and help you that way. Now, Ann has a whole slew of questions. Oh, before I, before I read your questions, Ann, um, on my blog, on my website, kirtanleader.com, I have a blog, uh, you know, a blog, and there's tons of things I've written about that there. All these, many of these questions, um, I've written responses to there. Um, and so uh, I just wrote two blog posts. One is choosing the right harmonium sustain because um, you want to be able to pump your harmonium a couple times while you're holding middle C and G and let it go. And it should last for a while, like four to seven seconds. I would say these new, I was joking around with my partner, Martha here, this, this Baba classic Teak, this is like top of the line thing. It's got like a 4,000 second sustain. It's like so, so long, it's really amazing. And so you want your harmonium to be able to sustain. So in, the, in my blog post on the sustain, I bust out like five different harmoniums and I do the sustain test with all of them. And so you can actually see what happens. And there's some pretty radical differences. If your harmonium's sustaining for one or two or three seconds, it's, that's horrible, that's awful. You're, you're gonna have a really hard time doing kirtan. It's like riding a bike, trying to learn how to ride a bike with two flat tires. Right, it should be four to seven seconds or, or more. So um, the other blog post that I recently put out was to, called Choosing the Right Harmonium Sound. And in there, there's all kinds of videos, links to videos that are at from the Old Delhi Music YouTube page. And you can listen to all these different harmoniums. Um, I, only, I only put links to the Baba ones, but like Nick was saying, he's got sound you know, links there for other different harmoniums. So that's a great place to research. Now, Anne, Anne's questions are really about your harmonium. And my guess is you do not have a Baba harmonium. <laughs> you may want to get one. So first question is, uh, if my bellows are only giving a brief amount of sound, how can I fix that? And how do you work with the thingies on the front to change the sound? Now, I just wrote a blog post on that with a video called what, basically called What Up With These Knobs? <laughs> and that'll walk you through that. That's it. So my blog post. And the person that owned the harmonium before me put masking tape on the keys. I removed it, but there's stickiness. What do I use to safely clean the keys? Um, also, is there anyone in Colorado who repairs harmoniums? I can tell you there, there is someone. And, you know, Nick, I'd like to hear you chime in. But it, often what happens is you get a harmonium and it's like an, a 40-year-old car that's not a very expensive one to start out with. And it's like, ah, you know, you can work on that thing till the cows come home. It's never gonna be a Toyota Prius, you know? Um, so Nick, what do you have to say to our friend, Ann? Um, yeah, you know, if the bellows only give a brief sound, uh, my first thought is it's losing air. Um, those junky harmoniums that I got, on the first palette that I had to fix all of them. 
I, you know, they, they helped me start to learn about the process of figuring out how to reseal things. Um, fundamentally, there's, there's issues that may or may not be able to be resolved. Um, and that's, that's the answer to, to that. Um, how do you work the thingies on the front to change the sound? Uh, the thingies on the front are called stops or drones. Um, and they're going to open up and allow, uh, if it's a stop, it allows air to come through the instrument or it stops it uh, from, from going through. Um, so if you can imagine you have two sets of reeds and then you have a stop that, that is connected to one set or the other, um, you are either allowing air to go through that base set or to go through that male set. Um, or you're not allowing air to go through through those sets. Now, in the case of something that you've already described is not uh, necessarily, you're not able to control the air very well, there's a chance that those stops and all those functions actually don't even work properly because there's not proper sealing between the chambers internally. Um, so it's all kind of related to whether it's fundamentally a, a good uh, working machine um and then masking tape goo gone um you can pick it up at any any store you might already have it in your cupboard <laughs> so, uh, what's the name goo gone goo gone it's this like orange uh cit citrus kind of based um, gotcha. stuff in a spray bottle or or a, a little jar kind of thing you know um yeah but that's a, that's a good product uh, yeah. and yeah. Okay. Uh, and I'll tell you that, um, you know, here in my place in North Boulder, I have um, six Baba harmoniums. So it's kind of cool to come by and try them all and pick one you love. So that's a that's a good way to buy them. I also I also rent them to people that are taking our classes on a monthly basis. So, um, you know, my guess is and I could be wrong, but my guess is that the solution to your harmonium wo woes are not repairing that instrument, but getting a different one in the mix. If you wanna give us an idea of what you have, uh, we do service instruments that that uh, come from, you know, aren't manufactured by us or, or were not purchased from us. Um, you know, use your phone again and, and make a, a quick video if you wanna give us an idea what it what you have. Um, in the case of this, uh, you know, silver duct tape and, and all of these kind of variables, uh, you may be looking at a, a, an instance where you're going to spend more than the instrument is worth to repair it. But there are instruments, uh, you know, just today I was talking to someone who uh, probably needs to invest about $400 or so into a scale changer to get it you know, in, into good shape. And in that particular instance, you know, scale changers start at, you know, $1,700 is the cheapest scale changer that we sell now. Um, and even used uh, in good condition, you couldn't buy a good, a good scale changer for probably under a thousand dollars, you know, so in that particular instance, totally worth, you know, getting this one from, and, and then if, if, if a, a scale changer like that doesn't work at all and, and is kind of, you know, in need of repair, it, it's not worth anything really um, because it's just an ornament for your living room. Um, so in, in that particular instance, you know, felt very confident, like, yeah, if you, you know, if you let us spend some time with that, it'll be sounding great. And the fu fundamentally it's, it's got everything it needs it just needs uh, some maintenance, basically. And once we do that, it'll be sounding great and, and you know, have, have value again. So it's, it's similar to, like, if you have a vintage piano that uh, doesn't, you know, work, <laughs> it's not worth anything. If you have a vintage piano that has been maintained and, and has been restored, it could be worth a lot. Um, and it's certainly a beautiful instrument. So... Um, some instruments are worth worth investing in some are not so just you know and if you have questions about 
your, your particular instance, uh, you know, send us a video and we can, we can give you an honest uh, opinion, I guess, on that.